Hello there, Aaron. Hey, Debbie. How are you? I'm very happy to be talking to you. Oh, how kind. <laughs> I have loved your work for so long. You've got such diverse skills in bringing oh. a world to life. But boy, oh boy, did you bring the world of Candy Cane Lane to life here. It was a dream job. Dream job. I I have already been told, Reggie has said this, Kelly has said this about him, you know, Reggie just wanted more, more than more. With that kind of direction, for you as a production designer, is that like carte blanche to just live out every Christmas fantasy that you had in terms of design? I am going to share something with you. Every time Reggie and I were in the conference room together, people eventually had to pull one of us out because we would just go double down and get it to where, like, it was the funnest collaboration um, I've experienced in a million years. Like, it, every idea would just get brought to a higher level. The game would get upped. But for someone like me... That is the greatest pleasure. So we were laughing and having fun. It was a true treat. Where do you even start with a, a film that is so visual like Candy Cane Lane? This is not one of your sub, more subdued things like A Love, Simon or, you know, Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang, which is a totally different style of production design. But where do you even start? when you get the script for Candy Cane Lane and you see the 12 days of Christmas in a Christmas tree and they're all coming to life and you've got a whole neighborhood based on the El Segundo real Candy Cane Lane and then you've got a Kringle house. Uh, do you just throw it all up in the air and pick up a page and say, okay, start with this? What was your process like on this I, one? I love, I love that you're asking that. You know, I start in a big white room and it's my favorite moment on a movie. And what I do is I just kind of attack in all directions. And what happened to me on this movie that was a bit unique was my interview. Like I said earlier, when I'm with Reggie, it was always this collaborative back and forth idea you know we both I, I have a strong comic book um love Reggie has this you know comic book reference like background he as well was from that we would just throw references and ideas back and forth and and what made this so unique was when I interviewed I interviewed with images and thoughts and ideas that Reggie, in the interview, we were already talking like we were working together. <laughs> so it was it was fantastic. And all of a sudden, things like, okay, you know, originally it was just the 12 days of Christmas decorations. But I pulled an image of a cutout lace Christmas tree with, with the 12 days in it. And then Reggie in the interview turns and goes, well, wait a minute, what if it moved? And then I... <laughs> You know, that became, what if it's a zoetro? Every idea just grew that way. Oh, my. Yeah, it was really a, a very wonderful, look, I'll call it a Christmas miracle and just go with that. <laughs> Talking about the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas tree, what, did you physically ha build that? I did. Yes, actually, there are two versions because it... There, it undergoes a transformation. Right. Right. And, and a lot of people look at that and they'd be like, okay, that's a tree. The steel structure and the welding and the elements and the discs and like the amount of work that just goes into building one of those trees. I really don't want the audience to think about it, but oh my God, <laughs> 
It's a lot of work. I remember the day after locking into the thing, we were like, okay, how are you going to travel that giant tree? And that's when the tuna can came up. (laughs) Which, you know, walking out of a department store and having a giant tuna can put on your car is, uh, is quite a treat. I love that visual. Uh, Something that I really love and took note of with the tree itself and all of the individual cutouts around it for your, you know, your lords of leaping, ladies dancing, maids of milking. I love, you did this out of wood. Was this actually carved out of wood? Because that's exactly what it looks like as the pieces come out of the tree. Love that you're asking that. Okay. We, we found that the wood was going to be prohibitive and way too much. So there are actually foam discs that we then layered a wallpaper with wood grain. And they were illustrated so that it would look like they were that. Then we had to like scenic the insides to get that look. So the answer is they're not wood, but I'm really glad that you thought they were. I really did because the camera picks up Tom's camera work. It picks up the edging, you know, as the pieces come out within the tree structure itself. And you can see the wood grains that would be there. That is love that you're saying that you're making my day. Aaron, that just, you have just blown my mind telling me it's not wood. That's how fantastic that is. Now, Thank you now, so much. what I find interesting is a lot of the attention to the production design is spent on the street, the Candy Cane Lane Street itself, the Kringle store, and scaled way back inside the Carver house. Yeah. I like that differential that you worked with. We've got way over the top with the Kringle store, which is very cute. I just think it's adorable. I, I, I love that you're, you see that and you get that sense. You know, Chris, Chris had to have a very strong aesthetic as a carpenter. Yeah. It yeah. was important to us to get, to, to feel that his love is, you know, presented in the way he chooses to make his decorations. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate that you get that sense of that. Oh, and the garage, the way that you have the garage designed and then apportioned so that we see his craftsmanship, the fact that he is an artisan. It's funny because we even went through a process of discussing how does Chris, like we, this whole movie takes place during Christmas. Right. Right. But what does Chris's garage look like during the summer when all these decorations are inside? If you look, we have like layering inside the garage mm-hmm. there that explains how he slides everything in and shelving where he puts it. No one will ever know it, but we go to that level of detail as we try and figure things out. You really do. And the camera moves around in the garage. We're getting a 360 in there. It, it thanks to various moments in the film. And thanks to Tom, our cinematographer, who did an incredible job. Oh, yeah. They and did. so collaborative. Real treat to work. You know, I'm curious about your relationship working with Tom, because that is so important. The production design and the cinematographer, especially when we get into color and into what, how something has to function so it can be shot. We, we really, uh, you know, we got in, we just worked our way through everything. The, this whole movie was a, a great collaboration where, and a lot of times people kind of lock in and they have their vision and you're, you're, you're working around or you're finding. With Tom, everything was about achieving what A, of, and, and let me say this, Reggie, kept us going back to where is the heart in the characters. It was it was a, such a great combination of people in that Tom was always capturing light and color and working with me to get the proper look. And we would scout the locations together, always, you know, keeping all of that in mind. And Reggie always keeping us on track to who are these people? How do we know them? 
It was great. It was great. I'm very curious about, um, is this the first time you've worked with live swans and geese before? Well, it's funny. I was very familiar with the animal wrangler because I had just done a movie called Strays with him, mm -hmm. which was all dogs. So yes, it was. But I, I also did Keanu, which is a cat movie. I, I've done a bunch of animal films. And it's funny, the current film I'm working on right now is also an animal film. I, I, I'm, I'm in the animal world, I'm finding. But... I found that interesting from a production design standpoint that in your design and in the location selected, you had to consider swans in pools and walking around and geese. Yes. I was familiar. Uh, once again, Mark Forbes is like the, like the top animal wrangler. He's an amazing person. So, you know, we would work together and he was such a pleasure and, you know, old friends we've worked together a bunch now so it was great to, and all his concerns and thoughts were always put into effect as we would scout our locations it was great now a big question for you aaron with all the films that you have done over the course of your career i think this is your first christmas film it isn't actually Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Well, yeah, it, it yeah Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah, it is kind of Christmassy, but I'm talking a real Christmas film. Well, I also uh, did Paul Feig's first film, Unaccompanied Minors. Oh, that's right. Which is a Christmas film in an abandoned airport, and we took over a mall in Utah. But but yes, it, and that was a long time ago. So. But but yes, I'm a, listen, I'm a huge Christmas fanatic. <laughs> it feels like every year at my house I'm doing a Christmas movie. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, it sounds like yeah. you and Reggie were the perfect partnership here. Oh, forget it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And and we snuck a couple of Reggie's real like from his home. If you look on the Christmas tree, I think there's a couple of special ornaments from his from his growing up. We all pulled stuff from our childhood. Charisse, our producer, had designed a bunch of beautiful ornaments that we put in the tree. It was great. Every, you know, that's isn't that the Christmas spirit with everybody weighing and adding ornaments and helping build the trees? Absolutely. So one last question for you, Aaron. I'm curious, is there anything that you wanted to do on Candy Cane Lane? that you didn't get to do for one reason or another? Yes, but I can't talk about it. It's driving, someone else just asked that. It's driving me crazy. But God, there, there was an end sequence that I kept pitching that I loved. But I'll get it in, I'll get it in. The sequel will have it. See, and I've already, I want a sequel. I told Reggie that. I'm ready for a sequel now. The minute it ended, I wanted a sequel. Oh, I'm planning. I hope we start. I, I'm giving him a month or two, and we better start this thing. <laughs> I'm let him know you said that. Oh, Aaron, this has been such a delight getting to chat with you about Candy Cane Lane. I just truly, I have never felt so much Christmas from one movie. It's just spectacular. Oh, thank okay. you. And I hope we get to chat again in the future. I'll plan on it. We will. I'll count on it. Thanks so much. Happy holidays. Same to you. Bye-bye. Okay.